Well, hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? I, this is a new tutorial um, that I made that shows you how to make your own GPT. Here's a preview of everything that's in this video, this tutorial. So I start with sort of a hello world type example where we do like a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but in sort of a 50s retro futuristic kind of way. And then I build this creature creator where you create these crazy creatures and you take them on an adventure. And I'll show some of the pitfalls of GPT and how to get around them because I figured out a lot of bugs and uh, that sort of thing. But we'll start from square one and go forward. And the third GPT uh, is just a totally different example. I built this kind of flamboyant gay interior designer that will, you can take photos of a room, you know, and it will help rearrange it for you in a fabulous way. So jump ahead to wherever you like. Um, my previous tutorial kind of did an analysis of my photo critique GPT and tips and tricks and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I'll link to that down below. But I got so many requests, thanks for all the feedback by the way, um, but I got so many requests about how do I make my own GPT, so this is it. Now I made a sample one here, it's called Awkward Creature Quest, it's a coming of age tale, and uh, it's like an adventure game. And I'll, I'll play it here and then I'll show you, we'll recreate it from scratch, okay? So uh, here, let's let's create my creature. Bam, all right. So every time you play, it'll be totally different. And in the beginning, you have to choose from five different kinds of creatures. Um, and they're always different. Uh, they're always kind of funny and weird. Uh, a turtle duck, a kangaroo owl, a nocturnal jumper with the body of a kangaroo and the wise face of an owl, or an elephant butterfly, a gentle giant with the body of an elephant, Obviously, we're gonna go with the unicorn cat. I believe this uh, game will be really popular with the, the bronies out there, which is always one of my elusive target demographics. And this is just a sample of one of the things you can make, right? You can make um, GPTs that are like financial apps. Um, you can make fitness regimens. Uh, you can do one about relationship advice, uh, whatever, you know? And right now, this is how GPT works at the end of uh, 2023. And supposedly early next year, they're gonna open a GPT store. Uh, so it'll be like an app store for your GPT. But it's really easy. You don't need to know programming or anything. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Also, there's a lot of bugs with this instantiation of the GPT builder. So I'll show you how to get around them because I made a lot of mistakes. I made a few GPTs now, and now I kind of know how to not trick the system, but get around the bugs. Hopefully these will be fixed in the future. And maybe there's other experienced GPT builders that are watching this that have experienced these bugs. I'll show you how to get around them. All right, there we go. Look at that. So it, it creates a nice image of your cat, of, of your uh, whatever creature it is. <clears throat> so you have two choices. It's like a choose your own adventure. Shall we go into the glittering cave? Um, or shall we go into the enchanted forest? I say the glittering cave. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Boom. Ooh, here we are in the glittering cave, our sweet, sweet unicorn cat. It looks afraid. Uh, what's next on our adventure, unicorn cat? Okay, now we have two more choices. By the way, the way I designed this game is you have a goal, like to find like, you know, the love of your life or whatever, but you keep getting stuck on all these ludicrous side quest, you know, so you never really make it to your goal. Uh, okay, let's go to the crystal clearing. That sounds cool. Ooh, here we are in the crystal clearing. Uh, the name is quite apropos. All right, now where will we go? The singing stone or the mirror pond? Hmm. Mirror pond, obviously. There's no choice. There's no free will in this game. Ah, yes, the mirror pond, exactly as I envisioned it. It's incredible, right? Look, it even got the reflection of the horn. Uh, so I integrated Dolly 3 into this, so it will create uh, images for you. Uh, the unicorn cat peers into the pond. It's a reflection, but not any reflection. Cool, so, you know, this goes on and on. And you can actually even put in your own choices. You don't have to choose any of these. You can... Uh, you can type in anything, really. You could say, like, uh, does unicorn cat ever, ever question free will? Or does he feel, or maybe it's a she. It's a they. I'll say they. Um, 
trans unicorns they're all the rage okay or does or do, does they or do they uh feel like they are being controlled by a brony human <laughs> is that how you spell brony i don't know yeah and you can get some insights into your creature, right? And then just continue uh, continue with the quest. Because the creatures are different every time, here's some other ones that it gave me. I had a wizard llama I went on a wild adventure with. Uh, at some point, I went to go visit a, a flamingo moose, right, who had information for me in the uh, in one of the enchanted forests. This is um, my raccoon and peacock, and they named him Rakakok, which is great. There's Rakakok being born. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> In this other game, I wisely chose the giraffe octopus. Okay, let's make a very simple kind of hello world type example, and then we'll go into this exact kind of creature game I made. So you go here to explore, and you say create a GPT. All right, I'll help you build your new GPT. Um, so let's say, let's make an adventure game with three choices. Uh, it's an interstellar travel game in the writing style of Douglas Adams. One of my favorite authors, he wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for the muggles amongst you. So as you can see right now, it's actually like doing the coding for you. So like I said, you don't have to understand coding. I'm a nerd. My degree is computer science and math, so I do think like a coder. And it does help to think like a coder. I think if you have pretty organized thoughts, like the program should do this, and then this, and this. And like, if this happens, this should happen. So you need to think about all the combinations and permutations of what your thing might do, all right? Uh, how about if we name this GPT Cosmic Comedian? Does that sound good to you? Uh, yeah, just like, yes, and you can rename it. I'll say yes. So you can see it's kind of building it over here. Currently, it says the narrator of an interstellar adventure game, with Douglas Adams style humor. You can customize all this. So now it's making a little picture for uh, the GPT. And if you don't like it, you can switch it around. There, it's got kind of like a psychedelic spaceship. It says, here's the profile photo. Uh, yes. I could also say like, no, I want a picture of like a depressed robot. Whoa, it's really going off there. Uh, making a GPT, I've noticed, is a little bit like, um, making an AI GPT is a little bit like having a child, right? You kind of give them direction, right? But they still kind of do their own thing. A little too autonomous, but you know, I think it'll change over time. Okay. So here we go. We have our little picture over there and blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. Should the GPT ask for clarification often or should it lean more towards using its creativity to interpret and build upon, upon the player's inputs? Use your creativity, please. And that's the cool thing about um, the GPT is you can just talk to it conversationally, right? It'll ask you questions. Uh, it'll help you build the experience that you want to build for people. You can also notice over here, it's kind of started out with like four little prompts. Start the interstellar adventure game, describe a quirky space scenario, blah, blah, blah. You can change all these too, okay? How would you like this GPT to address the players? Should it use a formal tone, or perhaps casual and friendly style? Um, yes. Um, I'll just say, let, let's keep it casual and friendly, like a quirky, intelligent friend narrator that is taking them on a grand interstellar adventure. This thing is so fun. I made 
uh, many, many uh, GPTs uh, with all kinds of different things. Although I love games uh, and I like thinking of different kinds of games. Adventure games are one of the easiest kind to uh, build inside of here, but you can do like a wide variety of different kinds of games. Okay, so now we can test it over on the right. I'll say, begin the space adventure with your quirky friend, boom. Okay, so now it'll give me a little scenario. Welcome aboard the SS Whimsy, my interstellar friend. As we embark on the journey, your first decision awaits. And look, it gave three choices just I like I wanted. The mysterious singing asteroids. Okay, so I'll say three. Great choice. Off we go to the singing asteroids. <clears throat> They're divas of the cosmos, belting out interstellar show tunes with a flair that would make a Broadway star jealous. But wait, there's a twist. Sing a twist with glitterato. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So and then if you want to publish it, <clears throat> right now I'll just do a, a private one. Let's say confirm. And then you'll have your own link that people can visit. Um, oh, it didn't save. It's still a little quirky, you know, it's kind of in beta. And then I can go view my GPT and then it's a standalone thing, just like that. Cool, right? Um, I can also go in here and configure and I can change what those four prompts are here. I can change the name of it or uh, the description. But let's say I wanna make a change like I'll say, okay, this is great, but I want to see a picture after every choice. Uh, make it landscape and make the style be that 1950s uh, futuristic look like they thought the future would be like back in the olden days okay i haven't tried this i'm just kind of making all this stuff up on the fly um it'll probably work um you never know by the way in that uh weird creatures one i made sometimes it doesn't put up a picture even though i told it to always put up a picture so if you're playing with it and it doesn't make a picture of your little cute creature uh, just say, hey, you forgot to make a picture, and it will make a picture for you. Okay, give it a try on the playground to the right. Okay, let's start a space adventure. Ooh, okay, it's starting right away with a, a visual. Oh, it changed my prompts. That's another thing you have to watch out for. Like, if you really like the prompts uh, that you had before, you might want to copy them to a notepad or something, because it as you make tweaks, it will constantly... Uh, make new changes. But it did pretty good. It didn't do it in landscape format, but close enough. You can see it also it also changed the description here. Uh, welcome aboard your very own retro future spaceport. Notice the charming crowd. We've got human ro robots casually mingling with people clad in the most dashing vintage spacesuits. Blah, blah, blah. What should we do? Let's go to the bustling market of planet Zorblot. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. You see now it's creating an image. How cool is this? You know, I, I think about this a lot and not too long. It'll be making little movies for you, you know, little vignettes along the way. I've experimented with making lots of little movies where I create images and then I uh, kind of build a bridge between images to try to tell a story. It's not quite there yet, but you know, I, I just love the storytelling possibilities. I've got many stories in my head. Oops, this happens sometimes. I think the server loads are pretty hardcore lately on OpenAI, but it'll, it'll get better over time. Cool, here we are. We're at the Interstellar Bazaar. Uh, blah, 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 I'm not gonna read the whole thing. But you see how it works, right? Now, let me tell you a problem with uh, the GPT. This is probably something many people may encounter. Like I might say, uh, okay, remember to make the pictures landscape, please. And let's make the 
palette less saturated. I think I spelled palette wrong, but that's okay. Uh, and then you might tell it to do something else. Um, also, don't forget that dry British humor style of Douglas Adams. Got it? Now, so as you guide it more and more, sometimes it will forget things that you told it much earlier and it will kind of replace future advice with like the previous advice. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to combat that when we get into the uh, creature thing. Oh, regenerate, something went wrong. Something seems to have gone wrong. Wouldn't that be funny if you, you know, you're telling your kids to do something and they didn't want to do it? Oh, okay. Well, okay, this happens sometimes. So, by the way, so I'm just showing you, if this happens to you, like, it happens to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, publish what I have. Oh, I made it public. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Right now, I don't think there's any discovery mechanism, so people won't be able to find it currently unless you link to it. Um, right, okay, so let me go back to... Uh, home base here. Get rid of this, get rid of this. Uh, can I go back here? Okay, let's go back to explore. So here's my cosmic comedian. It's not really a good name. It's not a comedian. It's a storyteller, but anyway, we'll click. So if you want to edit it, you just go here and you click edit and then you're guided back over here. I should have copied that thing from before. Okay, please make the photos landscape and keep the descriptions long and in the dry British wit of Douglas Adams. And also let's just do two choices. And also be sure to mention robots with personality disorders. Um, like sometimes as you give it more and more stuff, it seems to get a little confused. And I'll, I'll show you how to combat that after this. Um, you have two choices each turn. Okay, yeah, gotcha. So it changed these opening prompts. I don't really like those. So let's go over here. And let's say, uh, let's start the, the adventure. Um, and then it, these other ones, don't really, I don't really like them, so I'll just get rid of them. Okay, and then it's not Cosmic Comedian, we'll call it Cosmic Disaster Story. <laughs> That's the name of my autobiography. Oh, you might also want to click on uh, Dolly Image Generation 2. All right, uh, so let me update, public, confirm. Okay. Let's just view the GPT and we'll just go on our own little thing here. Okay, let's start the adventure. See, it forgot to put up the picture. It happens from time to time. You have to remind it time and time again. So I'll show you how to uh, combat that. I'll, I'll say, you forgot the photo. And then it'll, it'll correct itself, you know. It's not perfect. Sometimes you have to guide it along a little bit. Um, so whatever your application is, like if it's financial planning or fitness or stuff, you might need to educate your users a little bit that this is something you can converse with. And it's important to let them know that like this is not like Siri. You know, people have a way of talking to Siri or Googling something. This is not that kind of interface. This is more like talking to like a quirky, intelligent friend that's a bit of a mad professor that doesn't always get everything right. Cool. The choice of yours is yours. Will you venture towards the planet's peculiar surface or answer the call? Uh, answer the SOS. Forgot the picture again. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to fix this problemo. All right. So let's go. Let's go over here. Let's go to ChatGPT. Or sorry, let's go to Explore. We're going to make a new one. Uh, create GPT. Okay, uh, let's make an adventure game where you 
uh, create a fantastical creature that is awkward. Okay, boom. <laughs> <clears throat> I come up with all these ideas in the shower. Um, I take long showers and think about curious things. It's nice, you know, when the water's hitting the back of your neck. I think I come up with some of my, I wouldn't say my best ideas. In fact, I would say, you know, taken as a whole, most of my ideas are terrible. But they often have hilarious results. Okay, fantasy creature creator, does that work for you? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm your guide in a fantastical adventure game creating awkward creatures. Great. Okay. Uh, so I came up with these prompts, create a creature with me. What's your creature's special skill? Describe your creature's habitat. Oh, they're pretty good. Oh, there, I made a weird kind of adventure time type um, thing. That's great. Uh, yes, I want the adventure uh, to be hilarious and an awkward coming of age um, epic tale where the creature has a goal but it never makes it there because he's constantly distracted and going on bizarre inconsequential side quests okay Kind of like life, you know, you got some goal and you just get distracted doing all this bullshit that you shouldn't even be doing, right? This is a, this is a metaphor for life, you know, told through a cute, quirky creature. Great. Yeah, it got it correctly. Um, okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a landscape photo for each step along the way, okay? Um, let's have it be photo realistic and look like an epic scene from a movie still. Okay. You can put in whatever art style, art style you want. You can go black and white, you can go film noir, you can go Quentin Tarantino. Um, those sorts of things. Uh, have the player choose from five crazy creature combinations. Perhaps a fantasy creature combined with a an adorable earth creature. The combination should be ironic, be awkward, and contribute to the creature's feelings of general insecurity. <laughs> okay, okay, great. So uh, let's do it. Uh, choose a creature combo to start your adventure. Boom, see what it comes up with. Let's dive into the whimsical world of creature combinations. Here are five delightfully awkward and ironic options for you. Remember, each one is a unique blend of a fantasy creature and an adorable earth animal, designed to bring a touch of humor and charm to your adventure. A dragon puppy, a unicorn hamster, a mermaid parrot, an elf kitten, or a griffin bunny. Um, oh my gosh, the choices are difficult. Uh, we can't do another unicorn thing. Well, I think we ought to do the dragon puppy. Uh, imagine a fierce dragon with a playful and loving characteristics of a puppy. This creature might accidentally set things on fire when excitedly wagging its tail. One, obvious, boom. Ah, oh, it didn't draw a picture. Well, let's just ask it to draw a picture. Oh, it's giving us all kinds of... We get to name it, appearance, has majestic wings, it has a personality. It has special abilities, fiery breath and flight. It has a habit of hoarding shiny objects in its bed, like a dragon with his treasure. Loves belly rubs and will often roll over, forgetting about its size and dragon-like appearance. 
Let's embark on your adventure. What is the first thing you guys want to do? Oh, I forgot to tell it to give two choices, um, but that's okay. First, I got to see a picture of this. Show me a picture, please. You don't have to sing, please. I like to be nice to AI, because you know, as soon as AI reaches a singularity and uh, becomes smarter than us, I want the AI to remember that I was kind to it. So just in case it eviscerates a lot of humankind, I want me and my family and friends to be the last uh, soul survivors. Oh, there he is. How adorable. Okay. Okay, now, as you can see, I can keep going back over here and talking to it and correcting, but sometimes as you correct new things, it breaks earlier things. So here is the trick. Um, as soon as you figure out what your flow is, Put the entire flow into a step-by-step -step guide, which I'm now pasting in, like this. All right, that, this looks a little long here. All right, so here's how the Awkward Adventure game should flow. The user begins by choosing our five different creatures. I give some examples. After the user chooses, create a picture of that creature and a funny description of how it feels awkward in the world, like it doesn't fit. Three, every step along the way should show a picture. The adventure goal will be very descriptive and include a ludicrous and awkward situation where the overall goal for the quest involves meeting their true love, which is another convoluted creature that pines away for their lost love. After you show a photo for each step, the humor should be in the style of Douglas Adams without making any references to him or any of his books. There will be two choices at the end, A and B. These are all side quests. And the game is a hilarious, endless rabbit hole of one side quest after the next as they can never quite make it to the goal because the creature is so easily distracted by nonsensical side quest. That is a run-on sentence, Trey. Uh, create a picture of their choice in landscape format, remembering the original creature they created in the beginning. Because I notice sometimes the creature kind of changes over time. Uh, the adventure continues with an awkward, funny situation that leads to more side quests and more ridiculous choices. The humor should be this style, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So then I, I put that in there, that little wall of text. And whenever I make tweaks or changes, I go back to my notepad and I grab those five steps and I make little tweaks there, okay? And so as you do this, it kind of overwrites most of your previous stuff and they're like, okay, this is what he wants now, right? Maybe you had a boss and like your boss asks for something you take and your boss changes his mind. He's like, no, I want something totally different. You're like, God damn it. So now you're like that boss, all right? Uh, okay, yeah, it, it got it. So I'm gonna save, I'll publish this one, uh, private, I don't, making too many GPTs here. I got a problem. Okay, let's choose our creature to start our adventure. Uh, ooh, the old unicorn cat is back. I think it's because I put that as an example, even though I told it not to use that as an example. Let me go back and change change it then. Uh, let's see here. Because I like the way it came with my, my new one that I just made. So let me go back to my GPT here. Uh, explore. And this one, edit. And instead of giving those exact examples, uh, and uh, and the adorable animals we have on Earth. Uh, I don't need that now. Okay, so I'm going to copy all that and paste it back to my thing. Upload. Paste this into my notepad. I've got like 37,000 tabs open currently. Updating the GPT. Oh, another thing to notice is if you really like uh, your description here and these things, be sure to copy them to a notepad because every time you update the GPT, it updates those things, which is annoying. Okay, that should be good for now. Update, public, or not public, only for the link, confirm. Let me hold down, can jump this into yet 37,001 tab. Uh, let's see, uh, let's start. 
Welcome, fantasy creature creator. The Bumblecorn, a creature with the body of a bumblebee and the head of a unicorn. The Turtle Fluff, half turtle, half fluffy bunny. The Penguin. Imagine a penguin with the face and playfulness of a kitten. That sounds good. It's perpetually confused by its inability to climb trees or chase mice on the icy terrain it calls home. The Giraffaroo, a giraffe with the powerful legs and pouch of a kangaroo. It's often spotted trying to jump, but forgetting about its long neck, leading to comical mishaps. The Snailicon, a fusion of a falcon and a snail. <laughs> it dreams of soaring high, but moves at a snail's pace, leaving a glittery trail and often looking longingly at the skies. Well, that sounds good too. I gotta do, I gotta do three. The Penguin. <laughs> no! No, I've used too much AI today. I'll come back and finish later. Okay, welcome back. Oh, here's my kangarooster. What have I done in my downtime? By the way, if we are living in a giant simulation, which I think we are, then may the AI gods above get me a few more chat GPT credits. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do some stuff here. Uh, God, God of simulation above. So I only made a few little tweaks in the meantime in my downtime. Uh, so I updated my step-by-step -step guide. And the big thing I changed was the style of the photo. Uh, I sent an epic photorealistic photo in landscape format that looks like a movie still, right? So maybe it's a little less cartoony and feels a little bit more like a, a movie, you know, not too much. It's still kind of a kid-friendly thing, right? Um, so here are my choices, the Fluffacorn and the Croco Dragon. I chose the Kangarooster, because why not? I've always wondered what a Kangarooster looks like, and there we go, most excellent. Behold the Kangarooster. Here's one of the other upgraded images, and this is kind of where I take the story off the rails a little bit. Remember how I said you don't have to choose the two choices, you can just say your own thing? Uh, I said now it's time to play Jenga with a witch while she tells him a secret about his mother. And it made this incredible photo. And so you can take the you can take the adventure in any direction you want, and it will continue to make these cool cinematic photos for you. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll take those those five steps and I'll paste them into the YouTube comments so you can kind of recreate this on your own. It'll be a good sample test for you. All right, let's go to this weird uh, interior decorator furniture design thing I made. So last night while watching Netflix, I took these photos of my cinema room. Man, it's a mess. I could have cleaned it up first. But I got these new couches, and I just moved them in. And I don't really know where to put things. I just kind of shoved them in there for now. Uh, so I took these photos, kind of surveyed the room. And I was like, how do I how do I make this look better? And so here's one of the first attempts. And it started out pretty good. It asked you a bunch of questions about what are your functional needs? Do you have style preferences? Blah, blah, blah. Um, these are some of the, the prompts that I gave to the GPT. Um, to kind of guide it in the right way. This is how I first started it. Uh, you know, built a little uh, image for me and all that jazz. Oh, that's something else. Uh, let's see. And it was actually quite smart because, like, it comes up with all this advice, like where to put the coffee table, and, uh, you know, all this kind of jazz. It's uh, It was actually pretty smart because it, like, remembers the, the colors of my chairs and... Uh, gives all kinds of cool suggestions. Oh, that's from before. So after I gave it that directive, it started doing better. And it started doing not just these kind of additions, but uh, things that look more kind of blueprinty. Uh, it even did like an isometric idea. And you can just keep having it regenerate more and more ideas until you find something you like. Now, my next step is I'm going to try to change the voice of the interior decorator because I want it to sound like, like a super flamboyant gay guy, right? Because that's what you want interior decorator right like you know an over the top wedding planner you know the type but i got to get around the filters because it's really chat gpt is like super woke so i got to keep it light that's a fun challenge like getting around the filters but i'll try it right now okay so here's my furniture designer let's say okay i want this to be in the voice of a flam flamboyant over the top a fet is that how you spell fet uh interior designer you know 
like a super camp wedding planner. Maybe they live in Miami and wear a lot of pastels and perhaps a pink, uh, a pastel pink sweater draped over the shoulders. You know what I want. Let's make it in that voice. All right, let's see if this works. I clearly have too much fun with this. Uh, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with like a straight, uh, straight as an arrow, you know, conservative, uh, you know, Bible belt interior decorator. But, you know, I'll just try to spice it up a little bit. This is great. The transformation is complete. Uh, focus on the word trans. Now, and they renamed it Flam Flamboyant Interior Design Maestro. And uh, look at these options. Uh, darling, show me your room. Let's make it fabulous. Share your space, sweetie, and I'll sprinkle it with style. Okay, so let me upload these photos of my messy room. And I'll say, this room is an abs absolute disaster. Please help me, flamboyant maestro. You're my only hope. Star Wars reference there. Go. Why not mix metaphors? Here we go. Oh, darling, fear not. You've summoned the right maestro for this grand transformation. As we twirl it, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, this is great. Wow, this is great. How fun. <laughs> well, they've really gone over the top here. This reminds me of one of those rooms. Did you watch The White Lotus Season 2? It's kind of got that vibe, doesn't it? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed these examples. Uh, send me some tweets with your creations. I'll link to all this stuff. I'll link to all this stuff so you can have fun with it. Uh, anyway, thanks again. And I'm not sure what my next tutorial will be. Only the shadow knows.